Well, it's good to be back in church tonight. Amen. Amen. Good looking Sunday evening crowd. We're glad you joined us. Good church this morning. It was really good church. For those of you that hadn't heard the news, we had some great decisions after church this morning. Uh, Brody, uh, Randy and Jan's grandson got saved after the service. And then uh, Ryan and Angie that sit back there, they had, had their teenage daughter today. Ryan and his daughter both got saved after church this morning. So uh, praise the Lord. God showed up. And uh, sure made napping good this afternoon. I can tell you that right now. Uh, but praise the Lord. Thank God for victories won at the altar today. Listen, glad you're with us tonight. We come back for a fresh blessing in the Lord's house. Brother Derek, begin our service in prayer. Amen. Amen. Okay, here's some announcements for you uh, this evening. Uh, Wednesday worship, 7 o'clock. Lord willing, I'll be preaching Wednesday night. Uh, Saturday is our annual Easter egg hunt. That's always a big deal, and it's always a lot of fun. I know a lot of hard work's already went in getting everything ready and prepared. So if you've got kids, grandkids, neighbor kids, know any kids, bring them over. It's from 11 o'clock to 1 o'clock this Saturday, okay? And uh, looking forward to that being a real... Real good time. Our growth campaign begins next Sunday morning. All through the month of April, it'll be five Sundays. Uh, as we said, our outdoor ministry always sponsors uh, giving gifts to those that bring the most visitors, and we've done it for several years now. It's a great way to reach out, uh, encourage. And, uh, man, if we, like we said this morning, if we could just get one person under the preaching of the gospel and they get saved, it's worth it all. Yes. You know, <clears throat> giving $200 gift uh, to the person who brings the most visitors for the entire month uh, of April, uh, giving some just weekly uh, gifts next week, first Sunday of the campaign, $35 gift certificate to Homestead. Dorothy, you need to work on that. You was wanting to go there this morning, You just a week too early. Uh, but anyway, uh, whoever brings the most visitors to church, morning church, next Sunday morning, uh, $35 gift certificate to Homestead, and that's Always a nice time. You know, you used to give $25 gift to buy a meal. Now you got to give $35 gift to buy a meal and everything. I, would you, can you believe I spent $19 at White Castle the other day? Come on now. Uh, but anyway, that's just the times we're living in, I suppose. Several on the prayer list. A lot of folks were praying for. Jan is having, I'll just mention a couple. Jan is having a, a new knee put on uh, Wednesday, knee replacement. Um, Sister Diana, your procedure is next month, a week from tomorrow, then with the eye this week, Friday. So remember Diana as you pray, and uh, there's many others on our list, but there's a couple that I know procedures we want to be real prayerful about, okay? Listen, God bless you. Good to be in church tonight. Uh, let's stand while we sing our first song. Brother James. Page 639. My latest sun is sinking fast, my race is nearly run. My strongest trials now are past, my triumph is begun. Oh, come, angel band, come and around me stand, oh, bear me snowy wings to my immortal home oh bear me away on your snowy wings to my immortal home i know i'm nearing the holy ranks of friends and kindred dear for i brush the news Crossing must be near. Oh, come, angel band, come and around me stand. Oh, bear 
me away on your snowy wings to my immortal home. Oh, bear me away on your snowy wings to my immortal home. I've almost gained my heavenly home. My spirit loudly sings. Thy holy ones, behold, they come. I hear the noise of wings. Oh, come, angel band, come and around me stand. Oh, bear me away on your snowy wings to my immortal home. Oh, bear me away on your snowy wings to my immortal home. Oh, bear my longing heart to him who bled and died for me. <coughs> and gives me victory. Oh, come, angel band, come and around me stand. Oh, bear me away on your snowy wings to my immortal home. Oh, bear me away on your snowy wings to my immortal home. Yes. Amen. 463, I am thine, O Lord. <clears throat> I am thine, O Lord. I have heard thy voice, and it told thy love to me. But I long to rise in the arms of faith, and be closer drawn to thee. Draw me near, near, blessed Lord, to the cross where thou hast died. Draw me near, 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 blessed Lord, to thy precious bleeding side. Consecrate me now to thy service, Lord, by the power of grace divine. Let my soul look up with a steadfast hope, and my will be lost in thine. Draw me near, near, blessed Lord, to the cross where thou hast died. Draw me near, 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 blessed Lord, to thy precious bleeding side. Oh, the pure delight of a single hour that before thy throne I spend. When I kneel in prayer and with thee, my Lord, I continue friend to friend. Draw me near, near, blessed Lord, 
to the cross where thou hast died. Draw me near, 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 blessed Lord, to thy precious bleeding side. There are depths of love that I cannot know till I cross the narrow sea. And there are heights of joy that I may not reach till I rest in peace with thee. Draw me near, near, blessed Lord, to the cross where thou hast died. Draw me near, 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 blessed Lord, to thy precious bleeding side. And 277. <clears throat> Rock of ages, cleft for me. Let me hide myself in thee. Let the water and the blood from thy wounded side which flow be of sin the double cure. Save from wrath and make me pure. Could my tears forever flow? Could my zeal no languor know? These for sin could not atone. Thou must save and thou alone. In my hand no price I bring. Simply to thy cross I cling. While I draw this fleeting breath. When my eyes shall close in death. When I rise to worlds unknown. And behold thee on thy throne. Rock of ages, cleft for me. Let me hide myself in thee. Children, come on up. Tricia. to make that weird face. <laughs> uh, I was like, uh-oh, I played the wrong song. <laughs> Two. Jesus loves me this Love me. 
I just want to thank you guys for this church and for the th th times you give us and the good things you give us and the teachers, all of you, for spending your time. Thank you. Now that is precious. I feel like I've had church already. They're going to be a tough act to follow, especially if I don't have music. I'm sitting down if I don't have music. <laughs> sitting on a metal folding chair and what appears to be a Sunday school room he could see that shepherd boy a sling up in the air he could feel that giant hit with a boom in that room I saw the Red Sea part and two by two animals get in the ark and I could hear Mrs. Keen gently say, The God of the past is still God today. So tell me again of the old, old stories. Tell me again of the faithful who walked in the lion's den and the fiery furnace of Noah and rainbows donkeys that talk I don't want to forget so please tell me again a young man sitting at a desk with a wooden chair what appears to be a high school class he can see a battlefield there's giants everywhere Saying the Bible is a thing of the past In this new age you believe What you want to believe Cause God is whatever you want him to be But I can hear Mrs. King gently say The God of the past is still God today So tell me again of the old, old stories. Tell me again of the faithful who walk in the lion's den and the fiery furnace of Noah and rainbows and donkeys that talk. I don't want to forget. So please tell me again of the shepherds and wise men and the star that was the baby who was born I lost my
This is a little change of pace, James. This is what the, this kind of the old time hymns that I lo love so much. As I travel through this pilgrim land, there is a friend who walks with me. Leads me safely through the sinking sand. It is the Christ of Calvary. This would be my prayer, dear Lord, each day to help me do the best I can. For I need thy light to guide me through the night. Blessed Jesus, hold my hand. Jesus, hold my hand. I need the every hour through this pilgrim land. Protect me by thy power. Hear my evil plea. Oh Lord, look down on me. When I kneel in prayer, I hope to meet you there. Blessed Jesus, hold my hand. Let me travel in the light divine that I may see the blessed way. Keep me that I may be holy thine and sing redemption song someday. I will be a soldier brave and true and ever firmly take a stand. As I onward go and daily meet the foe, blessed Jesus, hold my hand. Jesus, hold my hand. I need thee every hour. Through this pilgrim land, protect me by thy power. Hear my feeble plea. Oh, Lord, look down on me. When I kneel in prayer, I hope to meet you there. Blessed Jesus, hold my hand. When I wander through the valley, dim toward the setting of the sun, lead me safely to the land of rest if I a crown of life have won. I have put my faith in thee, dear Lord, that I may reach the golden strand. There's no other friend on whom I can depend. Blessed Jesus, hold my hand. Jesus, hold my hand. I need thee every hour through this pilgrim land. Protect me by thy power, hear my feeble plea. O oh Lord, look down on me. When I kneel in prayer, I hope to meet you there. Blessed Jesus, hold my hand. Thank you, dear lady. today. Uh, so please turn with me tonight to the book of Psalms. Nineteen. Longest chapter in the Bible, I believe. Psalms chapter 119. And it's there. The subject tonight is changed by the word of God changed by the Word of God. Listen, the Word of God will change you. Some folks got changed this morning uh, through the preaching of the Word of God. And uh, we, we believe that uh, tonight, Psalms 119. Uh, stand with me. We're just going to read one verse to get started. We'll have prayer, and then we'll get right in uh, to the message. Uh, 119, verse 26, says this, I have declared my ways... 
and thou heardest me, teach me thy statutes. Let's pray. Father, thank you. You've blessed us with a great day. And uh, Lord, as we close out this Lord's Day here in your house, we pray a real special blessing again on the preaching of your word. Lord, we need you tonight. We're totally dependent upon you. Uh, Lord, unless you show up and bless, we can do nothing. So we pray for a work and a move of the Holy Spirit in this service tonight. Uh, Lord, we've been blessed already. And so we thank you now already. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. You can be seated. We're looking at some of the general principles concerning the Word of God uh, this evening. When it comes to the Word of God, here, here's what's at stake. Here's the issue. We need to line up with God's Word. God don't need to line up with us. We need to line up with Him. <laughs> okay? Folks have been spending many, many years and a whole lot of uh, wasted time trying to talk God into complying to their ways and their thinking and their methods, and that absolutely does not work. Okay? We, so changed by the Word of God. Some of the general principles, uh, just let's establish something before we get, in, and, and again tonight, this is one of them nights, going to look at a lot of Scripture, so you might just want to jot some of these down if you're, uh, if you're taking notes. You probably, you may not keep up with me, or you may, okay? First thing I want to establish concerning the Word of God, some principles. First of all, uh, I'm going to turn to the book of Isaiah, chapter 50, and I'll be coming back to Psalms for most of this, uh, but we're going to be looking at a few other verses also. The book of Isaiah, chapter 55. Isaiah chapter 55, we see here a statement uh, concerning uh, God and concerning us. In Isaiah 55, verse 8, says this, For my thoughts are not your thoughts, neither are your ways my ways, saith the Lord. Amen. Now there's the division right there. There's what makes the difference right there. God's thoughts is not our thoughts. God don't think like we do. God thinks holy, righteousness, you know, commitment. Uh, our thoughts sometimes aren't the right thoughts. And so God says, my thoughts are different than your thoughts. But then he also said, my ways are different than your ways. <laughs> which means God's way of holiness and righteousness don't always line up with our way, which sometimes is not holiness and righteousness. So, we, so where do we find, so how do we find tonight, how do we declare what we really need to do in life that, that it kind of uh, leads our decisions, our commitments, our choices that we make? We got into the Word of God. We've got to hear what God has to say. His thoughts are, we're not going to just say they're different than ours. Listen to me, church, they're better than ours. God's ways are not just different than ours. God's ways are better than our ways. So we need to hear from heaven. We need God directing us tonight. And something else about the Word of God, God will accomplish His will through His Word. In verse 11, you're already, those of you that turned to Isaiah, you're already there, Isaiah chapter 55 and verse 11. So shall my word be that goeth forth out of my mouth. It shall not return unto me void, but it shall accomplish that which I please. And it shall prosper in the thing whereunto I sent it. Simply means God will do what he wants to do. It's God's will that will be accomplished. God's will will give us direction in our life. And his will, the word of God will not come back void. That's what the scripture said. Uh, God's warnings, you know what? Through his word, they are absolute. We, we find over, in, in, I'm not going to turn there, but in Galatians Chapter 6, verse 7, hey, be not deceived. God is not mocked, okay? God is not mocked. Uh, and, and so we find that we will reap what we sow. That is a Bible principle. You, you, you don't sow corn and get back tomatoes. You, you know, what we sow in our lives, we absolutely get a return on. And sometimes that return is the consequences of sin. And so God gives us warnings that are absolute. But then he also gives us promises that are just as absolute. In the book of 2 Corinthians chapter 1 and verse 20, 2 Corinthians chapter 1 and verse 20, for all the promises of God, did that say all? Why, it sure did. 
He said, Paul said, for all of the promises of God in him are yea, and in him, amen, unto the glory of God by us. He meant that they are absolute. You can count on the promises of God. They're not yes here and no there. No, they're all yea. They're all amen, <laughs> right? I mean, we can count. So what are we seeing real quickly? God's thoughts is above our thoughts. Therefore, we need to listen to God when he speaks. God gives warnings. It ought to live us to live more cautiously and more alert. And then God gives us promises that are absolute. And that's good news for all of us because I sure like those promises. Amen. Oh, it, it helps us. It blesses us in, in, in so many ways. Now, let's get into this. I'm going to look at eight ways, very quickly, how God's word will change your life. It'll change you. It'll change the way you think. It'll change the way you act. It'll change every part of you if you get into it. I mean, just having a Bible don't change you. Just owning a Bible don't change you, you know. But when we get into that book, we allow God to speak to us from his word. That can change you. That can absolutely change you. First thing I want you to see, it teaches us the true principles of praise. Look at, look, we're going back to Psalms 119 now. Psalms 119 and verse 7. 119 verse 7. The psalmist said, I will praise thee with uprightness of heart. When I shall have learned thy righteous judgments. Word of God teaches us how we ought to pr the principles of praising him. We saw a little bit of that in Psalms 34 verse 1 who, by the way, was penned by the same author, uh, inspired by the Holy Spirit. David, what did he say in Psalms 34 this morning? You know what? Let's praise him all the time. <laughs> hey, it, it's right to praise God all the time. When the good and the bad, in the up and the down, it's good to praise the Lord all the time. And we see the, the Word of God teaches those principles of praise this evening. In Psalms chapter 9, Psalms chapter 9, in verse 11, Psalms 9, verse 11, Sing praises to the Lord, which dwelleth in Zion. Declare among the people his doings. Sing praise unto the Lord uh, among the people. And that's what we've really done in the service tonight. That's what the Easter cantata is all about. Amen. That's what singing hymns tonight was all about. That's what them sweet little kids singing Jesus Loves Me was all about. <laughs> right? Singing praise. Learning early to praise the Lord in song. Oh, listen. The Word of God teaches us these true principles of praise tonight. And, and you know what? In praising the Lord, did you know it's evangelistic? It absolutely is. One, one of my favorite scriptures from the book of Acts, Acts chapter 2 and verse 47. Acts 2 verse 47 Notice what they was doing. Now, this is some great scriptures here from 42 down to 47. The church was continuing on. I like that. They was continuing on. They wasn't looking back. They wasn't uh, stopping. They wasn't stalling. They was continuing steadfastly in the apostles' doctrine, fellowship, breaking of bread, and prayers. They was having church. <clears throat> but verse 47, they was praising God. There's the praise. They had favor with all the people. And the Lord, now here's what the Lord did. Did he honor their praise? Wow, did he? And the Lord added to the church daily such as should be saved. Amen. When the praise is right, the Lord is adding to the church. I, I believe that. And, and you know what? We've seen some growth. We're seeing new families. Praise, they praise him more. Amen? <laughs> I mean, it, it's great to see new families coming to uh, the gospel light church, and uh, uh, it thrills me, uh, you know. And then you see a new family with, with, with children. That thrills me. Uh, you see an old person. That thrills me. I just love seeing people get in God's house. Amen. Listen, so we praise him, and as those are saved, he adds to the church daily such as should be saved. So the first thing I want you to see, the principle is this. It, the, the word of God, it teaches us the principle of, of praise. He's worthy of our praise, and so we ought to praise him. He's worthy of our praise, and so we should exalt him. Secondly, it drives home. The word of God 
it, it makes something very sure in your mind. The more you get into the Word of God and you read it and pray over it and meditate over it, the more you realize you're no, you that are Christians, you are no longer not much part of this world. We're just kind of passing through, aren't we? Hey, this world is not my home. I'm just a passing through. I, our citizenship is in heaven. Amen? And, and, and listen, meantime, we will occupy until he comes. We will preach the word of God. We will have church. We will have fellowship. And we might even go bowling again. <laughs> hey, we, you know, we're going to stay together. But church, let's not drive the tent stakes too deep. Because we're passing through. Listen, and the word of God, I think, drives home our earthly status even more. Look at verse 19. Psalms 119 and verse 19. I am a stranger in the earth. Hide not thy commandments from me. Oh, listen, our citizenship is in heaven tonight. We that know Christ as our personal Savior. Book of Hebrews chapter 11. The book of Hebrews and chapter 11. I like these few verses. Hebrews 11, that great faith chapter. But drop on down to about verse 13. 13 through 16. These all died in faith. He's already listed several people, some of the Old Testament saints. You know, he, he's listed Enoch, who, by the way, was walking with God one day, and he was not. God just took him on home. Uh, one of the first signs of a rapture, right? Uh, we find Noah. We find Abraham. We find Isaac, Jacob, uh, these heirs of righteousness. Then verse 13 finally says, you know what? They all died, but they died in faith, not having received the promises but having seen them afar off and were persuaded of them and embraced them and confessed that they were strangers and pilgrims on the earth. Did you get that? And they that say such things declare plainly they seek a country. And truly if they had been mindful of that country from whence they came out, they might have had opportunity to have returned. But look at verse 16. But now they desire a better country. Praise God, I'm looking for better ground tonight. Amen. A better country that is a heavenly. Wherefore God is not ashamed to be called their God, for he hath prepared them for them a city. And the Lord's preparing a place for you and me tonight. Yes. <laughs> That's good news for all of us. What's it going to look like? Oh, I don't know, but it'll be better than what I've got now. What's heaven going to be like? I don't really know a lot about what it's going to be like, but I know there's going to be no pain, no sorrow, no suffering, no tears. Sounding better already, isn't it? And we're just passing through. And one day we're looking for a, a better country. Our citizenship is in heaven. And you know what? And, and the Word of God helps us focus forward. The Word of God helps us focus upward. Okay? Not backwards, but upwards. And one by one, the Lord's taken us out. One of us could leave this week. I don't know. But I tell you what, if it, if it is one of us in this crowd that leaves this week, praise God, I know where you're going if you're saved. You're going to a better country. <laughs> It'll be better than anything you ever had down here. And we know that. And the Word of God drives that earthly status deep into our heart. And so we get less and less attached here and more and more attached on the other side. Amen? Amen? So the Word of God teaches the principle of praise. It drives the, the fact home that we are earthly uh, uh, letting go and we're heavenly bound tonight. Number three, it removes some of the, the rubbish out of our lives. Verse 45, we're back in one Psalm, Psalms 119, and in, and in verse 45, and I will walk at liberty, for I seek thy precepts. Liberty. I'm not going to turn there, but John chapter 8 says, the truth shall set you free. Right. <laughs> and I'll tell you what, the truth, the, what is the truth? The truth is the Word of God. Yeah. It's our Bible. God's Word. And the truth will set us free tonight. It absolutely will. We, we can get so bound up in this world and the things of the world. Oh, but listen tonight, we've been, uh, according to Romans chapter 8, we've been uh, free from the law of sin and death. 
Man, we've been, uh, we've been set free from the bondage that we were in when we was without Christ. And now we're in Jesus. And praise the Lord, things are better, aren't they, church? Oh, the Word of God, as we study, as we meditate, as we, we really get into the Scriptures tonight, it, the, the truth of God's Word sets us free from things that bind us. It really does. We can, we can get so tied up, so bound up, uh, so bound down to things on earth, and God's Word just kind of sets us free. You know, we, things that we used to worry about, we don't need to worry about anymore. Things that used to bring fear into our life, don't need to be afraid of them anymore. God's Word gives us that freedom and that liberty to grow in our faith to that place in our walk with God. Number four, the Word of God tonight, it is in there we find comfort even in the valley of affliction. There's, God's Word will give you comfort. That's why I felt led this morning to preach Psalms chapter 34. It helped me. Thought it might help someone, some of you too. All right? The Word of God, listen, uh, comforts us in the valley of affliction. Look at verse 50. Psalms 119, verse 50. This is my comfort in my affliction, for thy word hath quickened me. I like that word quickened. Hey, I've been made alive Amen. through the Word of God tonight. And, and so, listen, uh, we... We may still physically be under some circumstances that we have no control over, but spiritually, we can live above them. Spiritually, we can overcome them. And the Word of God gives us example after example, as we saw this morning in the life of David. He, you know, I don't, we, we think of David, we think, wow, that was, that was some bad dealings when he had an affair with Bathsheba. That was bad news. Uh, that was bad news when he had her husband Uriah killed on a bad. That was murder. That was we, we think of David how he messed up. Them are the two things we think of, but I don't think we consider too much what I did this morning. Man, he really blew it. His faith failure brought eighty-five priests and a whole town full of people, men, women, and children, being destroyed, killed. He he blew it big time, but he got in the cave and got his victory back. And you know how I love Psalms chapter 51. Return unto me the joy of my salvation. Hey, create in me a clean heart and a right spirit. That was David's prayer and God gave it to him. And so there is comfort when we get in the valley of affliction. Joseph's a good example of that, isn't he? I love to study the life of Joseph. Man, the things he went through and the Lord was with him. And that's, that's the way it says it in, in several parts of the scripture. The Lord was with him. When his brother sold him into slavery, the Lord was with him. When he went, went to uh, be in charge of, of, of a household and he was accused uh, of wrongdoing and he ended up in prison, hey, the Lord was still with him, wasn't he? And blessed him in everything that he did. We can get into the Word of God tonight. And we can get comfort even in the valley of affliction. We absolutely can God, I said this the last couple of weeks, it's just on my mind. Wherever you're at tonight, whatever you're going through, God will meet you right where you're at. Okay, God will meet you where you're at. and He'll meet your needs there. And He'll bless you there. Number five, the Word of God teaches us inward inspection. You know, some people make a, a life hobby of examining everybody else's lives. <laughs> right? So, some folks think they've been appointed uh, the Christian police to examine everybody else. And the best thing you could do is examine yourself. The best thing you could do is take a good look on the inside of you. (laughs) Because there's where you're going to find the biggest problems. That's, That's a fact. Look at verse 59, Psalms 119, verse 59. I thought on my ways. David said, you know what? I examined myself. I thought on my ways. And turn my feet unto thy testimonies. That's self-examination. You know, is there, is there anything in your life that makes you feel uneasy because you're involved in it or you're doing it? Uh, that's a good warning sign right there. You ought not be doing it. Am I trying to make God uh, see things my way? Wrong. <laughs> you know, big mistake. A self-examination. You know, one of the the things that really helps us see where we're at and how we're doing 
is if we, if, I, if we examine our motive and if we examine our methods. What are we doing? Why are we doing it? And how are we doing it? And if you ever examine your heart real close with a magnifying glass held by the Holy Spirit, we, sometimes God will show us some things we never dreamed we could be guilty of. And yet it isn't he or she, it's me. And so self-examination is absolutely healthy, spiritually healthy for the child of God. And the more you get into the scriptures, the word of God, God will search your heart. God will put the spotlight on your heart. God will show you what's wrong. God will show you what needs improved. God will show you what needs changed. Amen? Amen? So number five, word of God teaches us inward inspection, self-examination. Hey, Paul put it like this. Examine yourselves whether you be in the faith. Number six, the word of God tonight helps us prevent from drifting. Anybody here ever drift? Most of us have at one time or another. Drifting simply means we're not getting closer to God. We're drifting away. Okay? We've somehow got in the wrong current. And we're starting to drift away from God. And we ought to be, all be constantly moving a little closer. Amen. Hey, step up a little closer. You ever feel like you're getting too close to God? You better get a little closer. Right? Uh, I mean, the drifting away. The Word of God will help prevent that in your life. God will keep... You know what? If you, if you spend enough time in the Scripture, God will keep your attention. God will get your attention. Uh, and God knows how to give you a wake-up call every now and then if you need it. But look at the scripture, verse 67. Psalms 119, verse 67. Before I was afflicted, I went astray. Hey, he drifted. And boy, he did. He drifted. But now have I kept thy word. You see this, the word of God, you know what it'll do in your heart? It'll even cut off the wrong desires before they get there. I mean... God will show up even when you start to think something wrong and try to correct it. In 2 Corinthians chapter 10, I don't have these marked. You might beat me there. 2 Corinthians chapter 10 and verse 5. 2 Corinthians chapter 10 verse 5. Casting down imaginations and every high thing that exalteth itself against the knowledge of God. And listen to this. And bringing into captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ. Bringing into captivity every thought. Hey, you get enough of God in your life and the word of God in your soul. You know what? It'll even prevent you from doing some drifting. It'll help you stay focused in the things of God. I mean, it'll reach down in the depths of your soul. It'll, it'll reveal your outward circumstances of our uh, actions. And it, it'll also talk about drifting. It'll pr prevent you from doctrinal drifting, from getting away from the truth of God's Word. Some folks, when they start getting cold and indifferent in their heart, sometimes even start questioning the Word of God. And brother, what you believe is important tonight. Hey, I believe the doctrine of the scriptures, God's holy inspired word. By the way, the whole book from the front to the end, it's all to be taken literally. And, 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 and if we stick with the word tonight, God, I think, will use that word to prevent drifting, even not, not just getting away from God, but even doctrine, what we believe and what we don't believe tonight. Number seven, the word of God tonight. You know what? What's so good about it? It's unmovable and unchangeable. Yeah. Amen? Amen? Look back to our Psalm 119. Look at verse 89. Psalms 119 and verse 89. Forever, O Lord, thy word, I like I love this verse, is settled in heaven. Forever. Church, how long is forever? Well, you can't really measure it because it's forever, right? Never ending, never stopping, never giving up, never quitting, forever. Well, what's forever? 
And he tells us in this scripture, here's what's forever. Thy word is settled in heaven. By the way, if it's settled in heaven, it better be settled here on earth too. It better be settled in our life, in our homes, in our church, individually, collectively. God's word ought to be settled tonight. When I get up to preach a message, I ought not get up here and stumble around and think, well, does God, what does God really mean about... It? No, God tells us what He means. It's settled in heaven. So that's what we'll preach. Okay? It ought to be settled in your heart today. You know what? To, to realize that God's Word is unmovable, it's unchangeable tonight, you know what that does? That, uh, that builds stability in your walk with God. It, it, it builds integrity. It, it builds soundness in your walk with God. It helps you maintain a clear mind. It helps give you a right perspective of things. See things for what they really, really are. Number eight, God's word tonight gives us true understanding. True understanding. Verse 99 and 100, and I'm about done. Verse 99 and 100 in Psalms 119. Notice what it says. I have more understanding than all my teachers. For thy testimonies are my meditation. I understand more than the ancients because I keep thy precepts. Now that don't really mean I know more than anybody else. You think like that will give you a big head and you'll lose your humility. But what he is getting at, the more we study the word of God and the precepts of God... You know what? Sometimes God will give you a deeper understanding of something that you really need to get a hold of. Get, get you a better understanding of what the truth is. Uh, that may, it may be a personal thing. It may be something, uh, you know, true insight into the, to godly wisdom. And that will give you a, a pure walk and a right walk. And that, my friend, will change your life. That's why I, said, I began by saying the word of God will change your life. It will. And if, if what that means, if you flip the coin over, if you're not staying in the Word of God and you're not praying over it and reading it and meditating over it, you will not be a changed life. And you will become more like the world rather than the world we're looking forward to. So would you agree with me tonight? We need the Word of God. Amen. It'll change your life. It'll bless your life. It'll help you. It won't hurt you. It'll help you. And listen, and it's the preaching of that book that'll still bless our services. It's the preaching of that book that'll still change lives. It's the teaching of this book that'll still bless people in a Sunday school class. And listen, it's good to see our Sunday school growing too. It is. 71 this morning. It's coming up. I like that. Hey, listen. Get in the Sunday school class. Get grounded in the Word of God. It'll do you good. You know what? It'll change your life. God bless you. Let's stand. Going to have a verse or two of an invitation. If you have a need, good news. God's here to meet that need. Father, we thank you in Jesus' name for the blessings of the day, for the good church this morning, for those that were saved. Good service tonight, the good crowd that's here. And I just pray, bless the word of God now. Pray that it has found lodging in our hearts. I pray someone will go home tonight and be excited about reading their Bible this week. I pray somebody will go home this week and give more thought into the scriptures. How it can help them and bless them and change them for the better. Lord, we just thank you for your blessings upon this day and upon this people. And if there's a need in the house tonight... Meet it at this altar, I pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. You need prayer? You come on while we sing this verse. One more verse, we're going to close. This is for you.
You need prayer? Let's get it settled. Everybody said amen. amen. God bless you. It has been a good day. Amen. It really has. Let's sing our song. Because he lives, I can face tomorrow. Because he lives, all fear is gone. Because I know he holds the future and life is because he lives, because he lives, I can face tomorrow. Because he lives, all fear is gone. Because I know he holds the future. And life is worth the living just because he lives. And everybody said, praise the Lord. Bless you. Have a good week. Stay in the book. And share your faith with somebody this week.